Hey guys, Stan with Great Overland. I'm sitting here inside a Link 148 all-wheel drive on the Ford Transit chassis. This is an S2, so behind me you can see it has the sofa. We also do an S4 or an in interchangeable bench for this so that you can seat four with seat belts safely. Um, I want to talk very briefly about some wiring. We, about oh, a month or two ago, we did some videos specifically on electrical. So if this is a topic you're interested in and learning more about, um, check out our other videos so you can see that. But I wanted to show something. Choosing the type of wiring, the type of casing it has, and the length of that wiring during install is super important. So if you look really, really close on this, you can see that there's an outer white jacket. It's the first layer of protection. And then inside you have a red and black wire. And those look like this if you desheath the whole thing. So this is super important because what I want to point out is stuff is super bendable. It's highly stranded. It's designed for low voltage. We run 12 volts through all of this stuff, even with the sheath on it, still super flexible. Stuff is designed to handle 600 volts. Um, it is absurdly good, this wire. We use this in almost every application in the van, except for where we're required by our VIA. Um, that's our governing board that comes in and inspects us every eight weeks. They require us on some applications on the inverter, the 110 side to run wire like this, which is Romex like you would see in your house. So the challenge with this wire, as you can see, is it's very stiff. So it's hard to bend. It doesn't go around corners easily. So where we do put this in, where we're required to put it in for safety on the 110 side, it uh, is very well protected when we install it. It goes through grommets and edges get protected so that it's not going to be up against sharp metal and wearing a hole in the wiring over time. The last thing I wanted to cover in this video, oftentimes we used to have a service center here that would service all kinds of different RVs and camper vans and stuff from many, many different manufacturers. And we would often open up cabinets to work on them and see just spaghetti wires everywhere. It doesn't look good, but more so the problem is all of that extra wiring adds to voltage drop. So the longer that tube is, right, it's like pushing the same amount of volume of water through a garden hose. If it's really, really, really long, the water pressure drops at the end. The same thing happens with copper wire. So what really should be happening is we should be cutting the length of the wire that it needs to be, which is what we do here. That way you're maximizing the functionality of your device at the other end of the wire. You guys hope this helps. Check out our other videos on electrical and we'll talk to you on the forums or hopefully see you out on the road.